Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our full achievement run, Max Difficulty Style. This is the current status of our third colonized planet, aka the Swampy Dumpster Fire. I have a lot of things I want to be able to do to this planetoid today, but first I figured I'd give you an update on some of the other things we've been doing around the star map. I know it's been a while since we've seen our friends over here on Envarolin, but Mr. DK Oz and Doritos P are currently loading up a bunch of igneous rock. All of this igneous rock is going to head over to our main planetoid. They've also done a decent amount of digging here. We've got a couple of the cold biomes still remaining, but I'm not quite sure what I want to do with those yet. We also have access to a liquid sulfur geyser, and I suppose one of these days we're going to end up doing something with it. But at this point, it becomes sort of a question of what are we going to prioritize? I mean, do we focus in on this planetoid? Do we continue improving our main planetoid that's been pretty much on autopilot? Which, by the way, sidebar, a couple of folks have been asking, what am I doing to keep the dupes busy here on the home planetoid? Well, we do get idlers, but they're not quite as often as you'd think. Mostly due to the amount of farming that we have between the berry blossoms and the sleet wheat. Not to mention all the ranching that we're doing with the pips, the drecos, and even several hatches. We're also still cleaning this planetoid up. I'm trying to give the bees as much time as they need to be able to chew through all this remaining uranium ore. But once we get close enough, our dupe's going to come through, bulldoze this entire area, and that'll be that. Elsewhere on the uranium front, we're still sitting with 10 tons of unrefined uranium ore for these three beta hives. And each of these hives has a little over 1,400 kilos worth of enriched uranium, which, as you may know, our whole nuclear sauna only takes 10 kilos worth of enriched uranium to run per cycle. Not to mention we have 14.2 tons of enriched uranium still left in reserve. Plus, we're continuously digging out the uranium meteors that happen to fall on this planetoid. And once we do, we do a nice little sweep command to go grab all of it, where it'll end up being refined using those beta hives. We're also still exploring and mining the star map. We have the ESS Diggy Diggy rocket being piloted by Whiskey T Fox heading out to this forested ore field to grab a brand new artifact and a bunch more igneous rock and aluminum ore. The ESS Slow and Steady is heading towards the west side of the star map. Of course, I don't know if calling this the west side is truly accurate considering space is sort of a three-dimensional area. But then again, so is the Earth and we still use west there, so I'm going to say west. Yes, Angry Forest is heading west to discover new planetoids. They also happen to have a rover's module on them. So if we do discover a new planetoid in our travels, we'll be able to drop a rover on it immediately. So with all that progress, I figured it'd be a good time to do an achievement review, considering this is an achievement run. Granted, it's not a run that we're in a hurry to get all the achievements. We're sort of taking our time and enjoying the game. But just to give everybody a quick look and see where we are. First, we start with our three main agendas. The first one, Cosmic Archaeology, is going to require 10 terrestrial artifacts and 10 space artifacts. Believe it or not, the terrestrial artifacts are going to be a little bit more difficult because we have to get these off of planetoids. The space ones, well, we just swing a rocket and grab the artifact and leave. Whereas the terrestrial, you have to land a rocket, send a dupe in here, grab the artifact, and then haul it all the way back. Not too big of a deal, but a little bit more cumbersome. The next one, The Great Escape. This one's going to be pretty easy. Well, not easy, just really clear cut. As soon as we find the planet that's holding the Temporal Tear opener and we reveal the Temporal Tear, we just send a rocket through it. Not a big deal either way. And then we have Home Sweet Home. And this one we've already almost accomplished, considering we already have survived 200 cycles, we've printed 12 duplicates at least, so all we have to do is build a great monument. I'm not sure why it's saying we're not maintaining 16 morale. Because if we check the vitals pane, we can see that all the dupes are above 16 morale. So it must have been one dupe... Oh, no. I see the problem. It's over here on Rikazon. The gift that just keeps on giving. To start off with, it might help if I put a tile here and complete the Great Hall again. And after a little while and we fix this place up, we'll have that 16 morale here too. I suppose that's a good learning moment, though, considering I never really thought it was going to count the morale across the entire star map. I figured it was just the morale here on the home colony. Learning is occurring. Might as well finally inspect this, huh? That's it for the colony directives. For the rest of the achievements, we still have several. 
Critter Whisperer, which means we need to find and tame one of every critter species. Default Morphs Only. And there's quite a few that we haven't done, so that's going to have to be the subject of an entire episode on its own. Some Reservations improve duplicate morale by designating four areas as a nature reserve. Four nature reserves? Well, that's a little needy. Moving on up is finding and taming a gassy moo, so we'll knock that one out whenever we're knocking out Critter Whisperer. Not okay, pretty cool. Reduce the temperature of a building to 6 Kelvin. We're going to need some super coolant for that, which we're still looking for the Glimmering Asteroid with the fullerene on it. Who knows where that is? It may not be called the Glimmering Asteroid Field, though, because this asteroid field is glimmering, and it doesn't have any fullerene. But I can't quite remember the name of it right now. I'm sure it'll come to me. And then we go through a long list of ones that we have already completed. That looks very nice. Yes, yes. Immovable object, we need to build a bunker door, no big deal. Easy living, have auto supers complete more deliveries to machines, then duplicates over five cycles. This one is a notorious pain in the butt. Job suitability, also a pain. But here's another question. It says for 10 cycles in a row, have every duplicate in the colony complete at least one chore while wearing an exosuit. Does it mean across all colonies, all over the star map, or just our home colony? But this one is also notoriously difficult. Teleport a duplicate and defrost a friend on another world? I mean, we haven't done that yet. Why don't we just do that right now? Easy enough. Here comes Doritos P now. Putting their hand on the little device. Oh, and it's a Bubbles! This Bubbles is motivated by a friend because, well, they just got thawed out. So for 10 cycles, they're going to get plus 6 to morale and minus 20% to stress. Unfortunately, they do have a bottomless stomach. I don't mind the shabby dresser so much. It's actually a benefit in some cases. And their only interest is in suit wearing. Well, Bubbles, who is 2618 cycles old, welcome to the colony. Except your name's not Bubbles. It's now Nazgul. I don't think you're going to be too much of a help over here on this planetoid, considering you don't like to do anything. So we're just going to put you in a couple of cases of improved carry and then get you up to suit sustainability training where you like it. Then we're just going to have to make some room over here. That way Naz has a place to sleep. And then keep an eye on the calorie count because this colony was set up with two duplicates in mind, not three. Although we do have a cheeky little grub fruit farm going, so it should be a decent amount of calories. And after adding a third cot and a third mess table, Nazgul is finally home. And we've earned that achievement we were looking for. Brilliant! Next up is GMO AOK. -okay. Not too big of a deal. We need to find one of every plant and then mutate it. I kind of like the way to do this until far in the future because sometimes the game will just happen to give you a few mutated plants along the way. So that'll be a late, late game achievement. Mine the gap, which is mining 1 million kilos from space point of interest. Right now we've done 20,000, so we still have a little bit of time for that one. And then the last one is Cluster Conquest. Land dupes or rovers on all worlds in the cluster. And so far, we've knocked out five of the 11 planetoids. So with all that complete, that brings us back to our dumpster fire planet. Let me do some work over here and see what we can come up with. I think the first thing we're gonna do is clean out this entire biome. I don't know why. It's at this point that I'm sort of just fishing in the dark, right? Like we just keep digging and building and expanding. All the meanwhile, I don't really have any good direction. Maybe I should set up a small power plant to utilize this natural gas, which will give us a little bit of renewable polluted water and keep the duplicates off the wheels. We also for sure need to investigate what's going on in here. Oh, never mind. This is a cobalt volcano. I guess while we're in there, though, we'll grab all these goodies. It looks like this one is also a natural gas geyser. So that means we're going to have two natural gas geysers, which is not bad for a colony of this size. Now, I don't think it's going to be enough to run all the thermo aqua tuners we're going to need for all these volcanoes, but maybe when we add in all the steam turbines, which will generate a bunch of power from all the heat that they're generating, it might be good enough. Well, I'll let the dupes suffer with all this building. It looks like we have found the new planetoid over here on the star map, and it is Dripony, the marshy asteroid. And since this has the tungsten volcano, this makes me believe it has the tree. It looks like we still have 15 range remaining. So I think we will make a stop off here right to orbit. And that way we can drop the rover on the planetoid. In order to help Dig and Go a little bit quicker over here on Rigazon, we've taken Brian and put them into super duper hard digging. 
Now that they have the Great Hall back, they're hovering between 12 and 15 morale. Not bad, but it's not exactly where we want them to be. But it will give us the opportunity to take these duplicates and put them into some additional skills. In this case, we had two points with Ryan Healy, so we're going to take one and put them in super hard digging, and one to put them into improved construction. That way they can build the ladders a little bit more quickly. Now, Andrew Thomas doesn't like to doing any of the digging, so we're just going to keep putting them into more construction. I also figured that during the downtime of me just watching duplicates dig, I would start working on these achievements a little bit at a time. Here, we're going to be able to knock out grooming of the divergent critters. Never mind, this is a vanilla achievement, and apparently we don't have to tame them. We could at least tame this shine bug here, though. A couple of nice updates. We are now in the orbit of Dripponi, and we have found the Temporal Tear. Yay for us. But this also means we're going to be able to deploy Rover's module here. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with just smack dab here in the middle. And then, unfortunately, we have to start heading back. I think I've already gotten the artifact here. See how it says recharge three cycles? And I don't know if there's anything else in range, so we're not going to be able to get an artifact during this survey mission. Which kind of stinks. So to home, Angry Forest goes to get refit and refueled. And as expected, here is the tree. Rover landed without incident. So let's start digging into here, shall we? Oh no. Rover can't dig there. Now I can't find any metal ore close enough that Rover can dig. So we're actually just going to end up sealing this shaft in. Once Rover gets low enough, we'll use a couple of tiles and seal it up sort of like this. That way there's a little bit of oxygen here. This is going to be another big challenge because we're going to want to get all the resin and everything from this tree, which requires a lot of work on this planetoid. And just like that, this area is now sealed in, so whatever duplicate we do land here, we'll have some oxygen just in case. Now unfortunately, because we landed over here, we're not going to be able to go explore this side. Rover can't open the security doors nor can they dig in the unknown areas that have to be discovered by a duplicate. And I don't see another way to get through any of this area here. Oh, wait a minute. This might work right here. Oh, look at us. We're in. I came back over to the ESS Diggy Diggy rocket and we seem to be having a problem here. That's right. Just about the whole rocket is filled with carbon dioxide. I know it has not been enough cycles for them to run out of air. For now though, I can put them back in their Atmo suit. That should make it okay. And you can see that the gas cargo canister has 3,300 kilos worth of oxygen waiting for whiskey. The ESS slow and steady looks just brilliant. They have plenty of air to breathe. So the question is, how did I echo this one up? All right, for some reason, this gas output fitting was not set on oxygen. Even though I'm pretty sure I had previously set it on oxygen, but hey, not a big deal. Why does Whiskey refuse to get inside the Atmo suit that has a bunch of oxygen? Get inside the suit! Unfortunately, Whiskey is going to have to sleep in that suit a little bit longer because we have an issue that's going to prevent them from fixing this. There are two separate gas systems that go on here. One takes all of the oxygen from the gas tank that's on the rocket and it filters through here for a little bit before it jumps over this bridge and then comes out through this gas vent. The second system is the pump. The pump is used to get carbon dioxide out of the cabin. It pumps it up. If it's oxygen, it goes back into the gas tank. If it's not, it's supposed to be ejected into the vacuum of space. Except for right now, the main line is backed up and this gas vent is overpressured, so we can't get this carbon dioxide out. Unless we do something cheeky like this. And unfortunately, that still doesn't work. Let's try separating the line from this input here. There we go. Now all that carbon dioxide will come out of the system. And once this gas output fitting has power again, which will be just as soon as whiskey wakes up, oxygen should start flowing. Just a heads up to double check your filter outputs every once in a while. It could have been that I just failed to select it way back when when we made this rocket but to be honest whiskey's been on three or four rocket missions since that happened and we've never had a problem like this which makes me think that filter got reset on its own with all that carbon dioxide drained we will snip it here and reconnect it to the gas vent and as predicted the oxygen's starting to flow 
Unfortunately, there's still not enough carbon dioxide gone out of the system yet to allow oxygen to enter the cabin. So that might take another couple of minutes. Run faster, whiskey! Just don't breathe a lot. All is right in the world again. It didn't take it too long for the carbon dioxide to slowly start to go down, which has then allowed a little bit of oxygen to come in. Ooh, we've got a colony achievement here. I have no idea what this could be. Oh, immovable object block a meteor from hitting your base using a bunker door. And now that that's complete, I can deconstruct the bunker door. That feels a little bit like cheating, doesn't it? We've gotten a fair bit of progress done on all the digging, and I think it's about time we set up some sort of system. I don't exactly know what it's going to look like yet, but I'm thinking of doing something where we drop off all the natural gas into a giant room that has a couple of natural gas generators in it, and those natural gas generators are kept cool by the polluted water that they produce, and hopefully it'll also have enough cooling potential to keep the cobalt volcano tamed as well. I'm not 100% sure if that'll even work, but, you know, I like to experiment a little, huh? Another problem with this dumpster fire is this area here. A quick look at the oxygen overlay, and you can see that there's not a lot of breathing being done here. And mostly it's because of the plug slugs who occasionally find some cobalt and then produce hydrogen. So it'd actually be advantageous to sort of open this up a little bit, and I think we can do it right here. As long as we dig that, a lot of this gas will be able to escape. And maybe this here too. All I have to do is let them through this door and then just hope they don't do something silly like get stuck and end up going off to the train station where, you know, duplicates take vacations. The other system we're going to set up is getting rid of all the polluted mud that we have. Right now we have 16 tons of polluted mud and 22 tons of regular mud. We're going to end up tracking those here on this colony, and there's going to be a lot more where that came from when we start digging all this out. Lucky for us, we have this nice little tank here, so we're just going to pump all that water directly into the bathroom system, and any overflows will create us more reed fiber. Now we just need one of those bouncy salad spinners. Here we are, the sludge press. Perfect. Connect it with even more power that we don't have, and then I'll put the water right to this line where this liquid pump is. Something like this. I would really like to bring more duplicates into this colony because everything is taking forever, but we just don't have the resources. Now we'll just take mud to dirt, put it on forever, and then polluted mud to polluted dirt and also put it on forever. But to be clear, this is not a priority task, so we're going to put this on a four. So that way, whenever the dupes finally do get caught up with the hundred things I'm asking them to do, they'll be able to take care of this. Between the farming and the running on the wheel, it's going to be a while before we have the available labor though. Brian has finally made his way up here to dig all of this out, which is good. So all of this hydrogen should escape to the vacuum of space. Now, eventually, it means that the oxygen will also escape to the vacuum of space. But once we get all this cleared out, we can sort of fill it in to make sure that doesn't happen. With that taken care of, though, we might be able to soon get back over here to this steel, which we're going to need for our future power plant project. We have 800 kilos sitting in here, which we're going to save for a rocket, but it's going to be a long time before we ever want to land a rocket here. So we're just going to use it for the gas pumps that will stick inside of these rooms to grab all that natural gas. Yes, go outside, plug slug. That's where you need to stay. Now you can produce all of the hydrogen you want to. This is another classic example of how we can get ourselves into trouble. Colonel Sanders here can't find any oxygen. Somehow, they were the one that decided to come all the way up here to deconstruct this because some bad streamer guy issued a deconstruct command when we weren't probably quite ready for that. So now they keep going back and forth trying to find oxygen. Not what you want to see. We can sort of force the issue by sending them up here because we know there is oxygen up there. But if I would have just left the game going, they wouldn't have had anything to breathe. So we're going to wait till they catch all their breath and then force send them home. All right, with a lung full of oxygen, polluted or not, it's time to make the trek all the way home through all the hydrogen. Good luck, Colonel Sanders. Oh, they just made it in time too. Great job, Colonel Sanders. Both our rockets home and we did get one artifact from the Diggy Diggy rocket and it's a model nuclear power plant. I don't think I've ever seen this one. And because the flights were pretty quick, both tanks are nearly full. And that's when I realized that our previous gas pipe 
and gas vent had melted. So we'll make sure we build these out of steel and obsidian this time. It's important because in this gas tank, there's 3,300 kilos worth of oxygen. But if you scroll down, you can see there's still 260 kilos worth of carbon dioxide. We also need to scoop all the goodies that we collected. This time it was 14 tons worth of igneous rock, 2 tons of aluminum ore, and 8 tons of sedimentary rock. Not too bad of a haul. Already, because I've gotten this down to a science, we're ready to turn Angry Forest back around, so we will crew it up. And as soon as the Radbolt rockets are full, we can launch them back again. So I will turn on the time to fill the rocket switches, and they'll be filled within the cycle. I love how the duplicates play parkour around the Radbolts. Sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. I didn't get distracted by the rockets still not taking off yet, and Angry hasn't been sitting in here for quite some time. No worries. We're going to go down to this tile right here. The distance is nine tiles, so I feel pretty good about it. Plus, we're going to be passing right by this glimmering asteroid field, so we'll be able to grab an artifact. So without further ado, for the second time this episode, Angry Forest is leaving the colony. Bye, Angry! Looks like Whiskey's rocket is ready, too. Question is, though, where do we want to send them this time? I suppose we haven't been to this second forested ore field, so that's where we'll head. It is also a distance of nine, not too shabby. I mean, that's not too bad. Four rocket trips, one episode. And look at all the digging we got done with on Rigazon. I'm gonna keep playing this in the background for a little bit, and that way we have sort of a fresh slate to start with in the next episode. I'm strongly considering starting off with the natural gas generators and get a sort of temporary power plant going, but let me know if you have any ideas in the comments below. And just to head off any comments before they happen, we're not ranching slug plugs yet. We don't have the renewable source of ore or refined metal. I mean, the poor dupes are still running on the wheel. So if you're still enjoying this series, consider giving the video a like. One of the disadvantages of doing long series like these is that the views start to taper off here in the mid and late game. The fact is, a lot of people like new starts. And don't you worry, we're going to stick with it. But with the views dropping more and more, YouTube's gonna recommend this video to fewer and fewer people. So help an echo out, will ya? I had a great time in this episode. I hope you did too. Much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.